F1's engine rules. Do you know what power an F1 engine has, how energy recovery works, and what teams can replace when? This is your insider's guide to an F1 engine. The latest power plant in F1 is its most complex yet, a hybrid system with a petrol engine and electric power from what's known as an energy recovery system, or ERS. It's been like that since 2014, but plans are now shaping for the next generation of power units. There's also currently an engine freeze in place for 2022, so teams can't develop them before a new version focused on sustainable fuels is introduced in 2025. So, how much power does an F1 power unit produce? The whole thing, petrol and electric, puts out around 1,000 brake horsepower, significantly higher than a normal road car. The petrol engine revs at 15,000 RPM. That all means a 0 to 60 mile per hour time of around 2.6 seconds and a top speed that can hit a blistering 230 miles per hour. The highest recorded speed of an F1 car was 246.9 miles per hour, set on the Bonneville Salt Flats where BAR, now Mercedes, trimmed its wings for a higher straight line speed. What type of petrol engine does the power unit use? The engine is a four-stroke 1.6-litre turbo V6. It's designed to a strict set of dimensions and material limitations, with the cylinders arranged in a 90-degree V configuration and two inlet and exhaust valves per cylinder. The turbocharger uses a compressor to pressure charge the engine. It's driven by airflow from the car's exhaust via a turbine that is connected to the outlet system. The fuel mass flow, the amount of petrol fed into the combustion chambers, is limited to a maximum of 100 kilograms per hour. That makes it more efficient and restricts the amount of power produced. What fuel does the engine run on? It's based on normal fuel, with no specific power-boosting compounds, and 10% of it must be advanced sustainable ethanol. The cars can use a maximum of 110 litres of fuel in a race. That's a third less than they did with the more thirsty V8s. Before we talk about the electric side of things, we want to give a shout out to our sponsor for this series, Party Poker, who currently have a special sign-up offer. If you head over to the link in the description, open a new account and deposit £10 or more today, Party Poker will match it on deposits up to £400 and give you £40 worth of free play too. Only available if you are 18 or over, T's and C's apply and please be gamble aware and play responsibly. Back to power units. So, what does the energy recovery system do? The ERS recovers energy from both the exhaust and brakes and converts it into electricity, stores it in a battery and then uses it for extra performance. Now, this is a bit complicated, so stick with it. The motor generator unit Kinetic, otherwise known as the MGUK, is an electric motor linked to the engine crankshaft. It's used as a generator to slow the car down with engine braking and turn that kinetic energy into electricity to charge the battery. As a motor, it then uses electricity to drive the wheels for extra acceleration, but it can only be used for about 33 seconds per lap. Then we have the motor generator unit HEAT, or MGUH. It's even more complicated and is used in combination with the turbo. As a generator, it provides resistance that slows down the turbo spin, which helps to prevent the turbo creating too much boost at high power and turns that kinetic energy into electricity stored in the battery. As a motor, it's used to keep the turbo spinning when the driver is not on the throttle, reducing turbo lag and smoothing the delivery of power. Crucially, any electricity the MGUH creates can be used to power the MGUK directly, over and above the 33 second per lap limit, so the more teams can generate from the MGUH, the more boost they can get. How much power do the electric motors generate? The MGUK can produce 120 kilowatts, about 160 brake horsepower. But to prevent hyperstarts, its use is restricted on the grid until the cars get to 100 km an hour, or just over 62 miles per hour. The power is in the hands of the driver and the onboard computer. Teams develop engine map setups to use the electric power in different ways, and the drivers simply choose between them and let the car do the rest. Is the ERS system dangerous? 
Well, it could be. The ERS is a seriously high voltage piece of kit. It operates up to 1000 volts, so can give off a very hazardous electric shock. To reduce risk, high voltage cables are orange and have a voltage cutoff when disconnected. The Energy Store, MGUH and MGUK all have high voltage junction boxes which have hazard warning signs. It shuts down in different ways, and to show its operating and insulation state, it's fitted with two status lights marked with a danger high voltage symbol. So, how do you start the cars? Teams use an external starter, which is slotted into the car to start the petrol engine in the garage, pit lane and on the grid. The engines are also fitted with anti-stall systems to prevent the engine cutting out when a driver loses control. How many power units can a team use in a season? Years ago, there were no restrictions on engine use, so teams would spend millions creating qualifying spec engines turned up to the max, but only able to last a handful of laps. To keep costs down, each driver is now allowed no more than three engines, three turbochargers, three MGUH, three MGUK, two energy stores, two control electronics and eight sets of engine exhaust systems in the season. If a team goes beyond that, and they usually do, they get a grid penalty. How does the FIA make sure the engines are legal? The FIA keeps a careful eye on the teams by fitting sensors and several standardized parts all over the power unit. On the ERS, there are a number of electric DC sensors with a torque sensor specifically fitted to MGUK. On the petrol engine, the fuel pump is standard and two fuel flow meters are fitted to monitor flow rates, which you can thank Ferrari for after its 2019 car was rumored to be bypassing the fuel flow limit. The power output shaft and each drive shaft are also fitted with a torque measurement system and pressure and temperature sensors are fitted on the fuel injectors to keep everything legal. That just about does it for our insider's guide to an F1 engine. They might seem extremely complicated, and that's because they are. Today's engines are the most efficient ones F1 has ever seen, and with the upcoming 2025 regulations only a few years out, it'll be an exciting time to see how Formula 1's power units develop into the future.